Uh, so yeah, 22nd of May 2017, um, I'd uh, got um, me and my daughter uh, tickets to the Ariana Grande concert, which was at the Manchester Arena. Um, something that we'd done so many times, dad, daddy and daughter time was was going to concerts. It's just it's just what we did. So this was something we'd done so many times before. Um, I picked her up from school. Uh, we'd we'd driven into Manchester. Uh, we'd eaten at our favourite restaurant, uh, San Carlo. Uh, we'd we'd walked over to the arena again, like we'd done so many times. Um, uh, the, the the concert went very well. Uh, she she put on a good show. Uh, we, we'd always made the uh, decision that we were going to leave during the encore because uh, the concert was actually Monday night and and Eve was just about to start doing her mock exams. Uh, so I'd had it I'd had it in the in the ear from a mum about not bringing her back. You know, at stupid o'clock. Uh, so we'd we'd always made the decision that we were going to leave during the encore so we could get out and kind of miss the traffic. Um, uh, 10.30 came, uh, I had to drag her out of a seat um, and we walked through the now infamous city room. Uh, we now know that at 10.31 uh, Salman Abedi detonated his suicide bomb and we, we were stood uh, about six metres away. Uh, we were the closest survivors, uh, everybody around us uh, died instantly. Um, and uh, yeah, I had to spend uh, an hour knowing that I was dying, uh, watching Eve uh, dying in front of my eyes as well. Uh, luckily, we both survived, albeit we both had catastrophic injuries. Uh, I suffered a, a T10 complete spinal cord injury. Uh, my, my spinal cord was totally severed by one of the bolts. I had 22 bolts uh, in my body. Uh, Eve suffered uh, a catastrophic brain injury. Uh, one of the bolts, sadly, uh, hit her in the temple and, and went straight through. Uh, so she was left uh, uh, with a, a very bad uh, head injury, uh, which we believe she's the only person to survive that injury in the world. Uh, she's had a, a paper written on her. So we're, we're both very lucky to, to be even here. Uh, uh, I was in hospital for about six months. He was in hospital for, for just short of 12 months. Um, and uh, yeah, came out of hospital kind of with a, a thirst for life and a, you know, shouldn't be here. Uh, so I've, in a way, I've kind of devoted my life to helping people with spinal cord injuries. Uh, and more recently, uh, I've uh, um, been speaking with the Minister for the Disabled, Tom Perseglove. Uh, so I'm working within government now and trying to help put together the new disability perception plan. Uh, making the world hopefully a better place for, for people uh, with disabilities. Um, I'm vice president of the Spinal Injuries Association, uh, a charity very close to my heart, uh, and a, a charity that helped me uh, from the day that I was told I wasn't going to walk again, which is amazing. Uh, I climbed Kilimanjaro last year, uh, and I'm close to raising a million pounds. The, the, the first time I had it, luckily I was at the spinal unit, uh, but I was a week a week of getting out of, of hospital, obviously being in hospital for six months. Um, and as I was speaking to your colleague before, um, I just thought I had a cold. You know, I, I didn't feel well. Um, you know, that, that feeling you get when you've got a cold where you've got kind of achy skin, it, it just felt like that. So just kind of popped a couple of paracetamol and just got on with running around like a headless chicken as, as I do. Um, and then, so I actually ignored the signs. So it was probably a couple of days. And then I literally woke up one night and it was almost like I, were, I can only, not that I've had a, a, an epileptic fit, but it was literally, I, I was having like really a really bad epileptic fail. That's all I can put it down to. So I had to grab the uh, the emergency toggle that I had in my room, and uh, they were like, "What's up? What's up?" And I was like, "I don't know. I just I'm, I need to go to hospital." Um, now they were they were using a thermometer, but it was coming out that my temperature was was okay, but it, it, it clearly wasn't because I was like it was almost like I jumped in a swimming pool. Uh, we got to the hospital and we found out that their thermometer would, would broke and uh, my my, my um, temperature was over 40 degrees. Uh, and when I when I'd got to hospital, I was 
kind of early red sepsis on the pyramid. Um, so yeah, so I had to go into HDU. Um, so it was bad. That was probably the, the worst kind of episode that I'd had. Obviously, being in hospital as well. I mean, I was obviously in the right place at the at the right time. Um, but again, like I said to um, Oliver earlier, you know, it was. I didn't know what sepsis was. It was just this word. Uh, but, you know, it was like, well, I was in hospital. I'm I'm going to get the right drugs to make me feel better. And then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be OK. And and that's it. You know, they, they, they tell you what it is, but they, that's it. You know what I mean? It was, yeah, you've got eurosepsis. You know, it was, you know, it was close to organs shutting down and things like that, you know. And it was like, all oh, right, OK great well I'm in hospital you make me feel better and you know I'll, I'll leave hospital and that's it um and then I had it again so that was August 2017 I then got it again in December 2017 when I'd already come home uh, and that was a real eye-opener because that was the first time that I'd gone into hospital as a paraplegic and the hospital didn't know how to look after me with a spinal cord injury um, so that was a real eye opener in just in terms of, you know, this is serious, you know, from a just, you know, I've come into hospital, they, they don't know how to look after somebody with a spinal cord injury. They've not put me on the right mattress. Uh, they, they haven't put a catheter in me. Uh, they don't know how to empty my bowels. Uh, they've, you know, it was just, yeah, I had to almost kind of sign myself out to go home because yeah, I would have been safer at home. Um, so, yeah, so I, I became kind of conscious of the symptoms. So probably sepsis three, four and five, um, even though I was blue lighted to hospital, it was we knew the symptoms and we'd rung the ambulance before it became kind of a, an issue. Um, and that's been the, you know, kind of every time I've had it, although this last time as I, as I talked to Oliver and I think I said to you, I didn't have the usual symptoms. So I wasn't sweating. I didn't have the shakes. Um, I had a temperature, but when I was having paracetamol and ibuprofen, all my stats were green. So I didn't go to A&E this time like I would normally do. So this time I left it again, probably 24 hours. Uh, and then uh, it was almost kind of like, I think I need to go to hospital. Uh, it was, I was amber, amber sepsis this time. Um, so that that's a worry. Uh, just about that my body's obviously becoming you know kind of used to the to the usual symptoms and, and maybe aren't showing that uh, which is a worry in itself given given the stats around it um, but yeah the, the normal symptoms that I used to get were you know feeling like death uh, a high temperature sweating like I'd jumped in a swimming pool like literally my t-shirt would be wet through like you could wring it out um they're, they're the normally the telltale signs I'd, I'd normally be vomiting uh and then that's normally the signs for me to 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 kind of either ring 911 or get an ambulance um and then we get to hospital and you know, they confirm that they confirm that it is sepsis you know probably eurosepsis given I use a catheter and my history and then it's just you know throwing gentamicin down your body every 24 hours intravenous until they grow the cultures and they can predetermine what antibiotic they need to fight uh, the the infection so it is it's you know you feel you don't feel great for three or four days and then they start with the antibiotic that fights the infection and then you know i'm, I'm generally normally home within a week you know to me it almost kind of feels like a hidden killer uh, because the symptoms can actually just look like a common cold or a flu uh, and actually you know if you especially in children if you don't you know get that emergency help straight away you know it can be you know serious you know you you can die from it uh, so this isn't just for you know people with you know spinal cord injury or people that are disabled you know this, this can affect fit people uh, obviously, for people with spinal cord injuries like like myself, you know, urinary tract infections are an everyday occurrence, unfortunately, because 
because we um, we we can't our uh, bells and bladders uh, don't work the usual way, so we have to use um, uh, medical devices to do that to 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 uh, to go for a wee or to go for a number two. We we have to use medical devices for that, and because we're using um uh, medical devices and putting them into our bodies there's a risk of infection uh, unfortunately there's, there's no other way of of, of doing that uh, so it is just something that we we have to suppose you know come to terms with uh for some reason for me it's like some of my friends will get urinary tract infections and they'll just feel a bit rubbish they'll take some antibiotics and that's it but for me it's I don't know it just it doesn't work that way and hopefully people uh you know who are experiencing those symptoms you know rather than just saying oh, you know like I did the first time or maybe it's just a cold you know you have to start thinking now could this be sepsis because actually you know as I've seen with myself sepsis only takes hours yeah, for me, uh, and again, I think I I was diagnosed with depression in 2014. So I mean, that that's a daily battle anyway. Uh, I've been medication free now, which I think is my biggest battle uh, coming up to uh, four years now, uh, which is, but it, it is a daily battle. Uh, so I think there's probably some of that in there as well. Uh, but uh, as I said to Oliver, it's, it's almost like a, a snakes and ladders uh, approach for me where, you know, kind of when, when I have sepsis and obviously n nobody wants to be in hospital, no, no matter how, which hospital you go to, they're, they're not. Uh, and again, I don't mean it disrespectfully, but, you know, hospitals aren't nice places to be, are they? You, you know what I mean? You, you, you're in a bed, you know, when, when I have sepsis, it affects my appetite so I can't eat. You know, I'm having to force myself to drink. Obviously, I feel like death anyway. Uh, you know, you, you you can't sleep. You you've got a bleeping machine at the side of you uh, going off. Uh, you know, doing your 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 pulse and your 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 oxygen levels. You've got nurses coming taking blood and doing your stats every three hours. You know what I mean? So it, it's it it's not a nice place to be anywhere. So mentally, it's always a, a, a tough thing as well as trying to get better. I'm having to battle kind of the the, the mental aspect of it. And then, and then for, for me personally, I, I come out of hospital and, uh, you know, I, I, I literally cannot do anything. You know, my, my wife has to, you know, kind of do most things for me. I'll probably spend, you know, a week, 10 days in bed after coming out of hospital. Uh, and obviously when you have to catheterize, when you have to evacuate your bowels, you know, to have to get out of bed to do that is, you know, it, it's, it's tough, you know, it's, there's, Sometimes I'll I'll be crying because it's just it's just that hard to to get out of bed. And like I said to Oliver before, sometimes I'll look up to the sky and I'll go, you know, what else do you want to throw at my door? You know what I mean? As if a spinal cord injury isn't hard enough, you know, you have to throw all this at my bed as well. You know what I mean? What what do I have to prove? Um, and I'm not even religious. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's um, you know it is it is tough um and you know it's with me being as active as I am I, I feel like I'm letting people down not not being able to do the things that I do so I, I do give myself a hard time and you know just just doing the simple things you know I you know I do I, I cry about it because I, I can't do it um but again I've, I've just been told today that that's a that's a normal kind of thing of sepsis so but that's the first time that I've heard that in in kind of six years so to get to get that kind of um talk today has been has been really good that actually the way I'm feeling you know is 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 normal you know so so don't give yourself a hard time you know just just be easy on yourself which is easier said than done uh me being me uh but I, I say I I, I don't think I've give, given sepsis the, the respect um, that it deserves. I think a lot of that is because you don't get told about it. So how can you respect something that you don't know anything about or that, that there's, you know, you're not even educated on? So I've had to educate myself on it by obviously visiting your website, which is very good, and looking at all the literature. 
um, and again, hence, hence why I, I reached out and, and just thought it was it was about time that I maybe spoke out about this a bit more publicly and just being a man in general that we're rubbish at talking and actually that, you know, if, if I can talk about what I've been through and, you know, talking about the things that you talk about when you've got a spinal cord injury, you know, you, you know about people's bowel and bladder movements before you know the name, you know what I mean? So it has, it has become, you know, the thing that you do talk about. Um, and I get a lot of messages from men and, and, and people that I've have helped over the years, uh, generally on, on on mental health, you know, I, there's, there's, you know, certainly the mental health side. There's still too many men taking their own lives, which I get I get very sad about. Uh, other than yourselves, there's not really any any. You know, you, you certainly don't get told about it in the hospital when you've got it. Now, can you imagine having cancer and not being told about it? When you know what I mean? I just I, I can't. We have a similar battle with spinal cord injury, you know, about the awareness and the perception of it, you know, and, and sepsis does seem very similar where it's just this word that, you know, people die from, but, you know, no, nobody knows really what it is, um, you know, um, so maybe we we, have, we all have to get better on it. If, if I'd have had an Oliver, you know, on, on the day of release, say, right, you know, it doesn't have to be like a 30 minute thing. It can be, Right, you know, you've had sepsis, you know, these are the symptoms for next time. This is how you might feel. This is the helpline. This is the website. Have a look. Get yourself kind of, you know, educated. There's a helpline. There's a peer support group. You've got uh, nurses that can help. You know, that would be that would have been perfect. You know what I mean? It's just that two minutes of information that you know and I know obviously that would cost a lot of money but that's going to save lives and that's going to stop people being in hospital in the first place like me taking up a bed for a week which is going to cost several thousand pounds but we don't see it we don't see it from a bird's eye view do we 